Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. We have negative i to the power z equals i. And we're going to be solving for z values. Now, we could probably call this an exponent that negates because it just turns negative i into i. We could also generalize this into a case where we have a base and then the opposite of the base on the right hand side. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and solve this case first. Now, how do you solve these kinds of equations? We can use what is called the complex exponentiation rule, which says if you have something like w to the power z, it can be written as exp exp or e to the power z times ln w. And for ln w, we can kind of think of ln w as the ln of absolute value of w, which is a real valued logarithm, plus i times the argument of w, which is most of the time the arctangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. If you need to, sometimes you adjust for the quadrant. Anyway, so you can plug it in together and you'll get a formula or you can just directly do it. So negative i to the power z can be then written as e to the power z times ln negative i. So this equals i on the right hand side and i can also be written as an exponential as you should know. If you think about the argon plane, i will appear in the on the imaginary axis which is uh, the, the vertical one, you know, this is the real, that's the imaginary. And obviously its distance from zero is one unit and it makes an angle of pi over two radians. But that's only the principal angle, which is the smallest value between negative pi and pi. And of course you can add multiples of two pi to it. That's why we're gonna write it in the general form. Okay, so we can basically replace i with e to the power i times pi over two plus two pi n using Euler's formula. And remember Euler, what Euler said, if you have a complex number whose argument is known, and of course the modulus, then you can kind of write it as r e to the i theta, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument. And this is called the polar form. And there's obviously a way to expand it, like e to the i theta can also be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. That's Thanks to Euler, we have a beautiful, beautiful relationship. Okay, now let's go ahead and put these two together and see what we can do. But first, we kind of have to simplify ln of a complex number. You got to remember, ln of a complex number is multi-valued. So you kind of need to consider different cases, right? But let's just, for simplicity's sake, consider the principal value. And I believe that is the right approach because if you consider multiple values that you're going to get a ratio of integers which kind of works but some people are against it like what is i to the power two fifths right it has multiple values because of the fifth root because i has five fifth roots make sense okay I'm, and i'm not even talking about i to the power 10 over 5 because that's a different story anyways so Let's go ahead and just go with the principal value for the, this one. So it's going to be ln of the absolute value of negative y, which is 1. So it's going to be ln 1, which is 0. And then plus i times. I'm going to use the principal argument for negative i, and that will be negative pi over 2, right? Now, why don't I use 3 pi over 2? Because I want to use something between negative pi and pi. And of course, one of them is not included. I think... Pi is not included, is it like this? Or the other way around, something like this. I think it's the second one. Anyways, I probably, if I had to choose, I would choose the second one. Now, great, let's go ahead and plug it in. So now we have e to the power, oh, by the way, before we plug it in, we can actually bring these down because these are the exponents, right? So they're gonna be equal, z ln negative i, equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Awesome. 
Let's go ahead and simplify this now. This is z, by the way, this is zero. z times negative i pi over two, right? That's a negative, notice that. Equals i times pi over two plus two pi n. Now we can go ahead and simplify some stuff. For example, you can cancel out the i and then you can take out a pi and you can also cancel that out. Like you can write this as pi times one half plus two n. Oh, I forgot to say, n is an integer all this time, right? You probably guessed it. Now z is multiplied by negative pi over two. And now the pi over two is gonna, I mean, just the pi, is gonna cancel out and guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna multiply both sides by negative two. Z is gonna be negative two times one half plus two n. And guess what that's gonna give us? z equals, I would like to write this first, negative 4n minus 1, where n is an integer. What is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and uh, elaborate on that a little bit. For example, if n is an integer, so suppose if uh, suppose n is equal to 0, then you would get z equals negative 1. Hmm. Is this actually true? Let's go back to the very beginning where we had the original problem, negative i to the power z, equals i, right? But let's just replace z with negative 1. What is negative i to the power of negative 1? It just means 1 over negative i. And as you know, something like this can be simplified if you multiply the top and the bottom by i, which is the conjugate. Negative i squared is 1, and this will be i. So yes, z equals negative 1 is definitely a solution, and it's not the only one. There's plenty of solutions, right? If you replace n with negative 1, you get 3, so on and so forth, right? So there are so many values which we can't really list here, but uh, we can kind of do a better job of explaining this. And I believe Wolfram Alpha also adopts the same approach, like should I'll show you the results anyways, so you'll get to see it. But I'm thinking this doesn't look very nice from a number theoretical standpoint. I would, instead of negative 4 times an integer, I would probably write it as 4 times an integer, positive 4, because that would be the same thing. If n is negative, then k is positive, so on and so forth. And instead of negative 1, think about it mod 4, because that's how I powers of i alternate. Uh, I would just use a 3, because negative 1 and 3 are congruent to each other, mod 4. Or is that congruent? I think it's congruent. Anyways, I think Michael Penn says k congruent. Everybody says it differently. So z equals 4k plus 3 where k is an integer and that will be my final, final, final answer. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha and we'll finish with that but you can play around with this and ta-da-da. Yes, we get the same solution from Wolfram Alpha except it doesn't turn it into a positive because it's not absolutely necessary. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.